So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really super easy needle felted sloth and I know I keep saying in all my tutorials they're really easy and beginners can do them but you really can and it's really going to give you some excellent needle felting skills to continue and make other shaped faces as well. So this sloth I haven't got a pin on him at the moment but you can put a little pin badge on the back of him and then he sits really nicely over like a pocket so he looks like his arms are hanging down or if you've got a child at school or a grandchild or anything like that it can go onto a backpack over a pocket really nicely and again it just looks like he's kind of peeking out from the pocket so it's really sweet and it's a lovely thing to go back to school with when all the kids go back to school in September. September for the UK I'm not really sure when they go back for everywhere else. So let's have a look at all the materials you're going to need to make this really cute needle felted sloth. See you in a bit. So for this tutorial today, you're going to need about 15 to 20 grams of a, a white wool bats ideally, but you could use fox sheep if you want to as well. So I've got a white Shetland core wool here, but fox sheep would work really nicely because you get the nice tan colour coming through, which looks lovely on the sloth's face. So about 15 grams of that. You're going to need um, probably a few pinches of brown merino roving. So you don't need loads, but you need enough to make your nose, your eyes, eyebrows and mouth. So I would say about this much, which is probably about three grams would be about right. You're going to need about 10 grams of a brown wool bat. So I've got a Coradale here, but you could use any wool bats that you want to. So this is kind of like a tanned color, but you want to also choose another color that's gonna be slightly lighter again. You don't wanna to go too dark because you'll lose the eyes. So something like this works really nicely. And then you want about five to six grams of a lighter colored wool bats. So this is kind of like a taupey colored Coradale again. Um, and this is just to kind of cover the top of your sloth's head and also the back of his head as well. So you don't need lots of this. So about six grams is probably about right. And then tools wise, I would recommend using some needle felting pens. So I've got two twisted fine needles in here. And then I've got another needle felting pen with two twisted medium needles. I've also got an extra fine single twisted needle and also a single medium needle for more of the detailed work. And then finally, you're going to need a kebab stick. So I've got this kind of cheap wooden kebab stick here, but as long as it's got this rough diameter that I'm holding, that should be about right. You also may want to get a badge fastening for the back of your sloth once he's finished and some super glue to add it onto so you can clip him onto bags and things like that. So I'm gonna stop chatting now and let's start making this sloth. Okay, so the first thing we need to make our sloth head pin badge is some wool bats. And I've got some Shetland white here, but you can use anything that you prefer. And I would recommend fox sheep in this as well, because you've already got that natural kind of sloth colour. So if you can get your hands on some fox sheep, it's definitely worth making this pin badge in that for the sloth we're about to make. So I'm just going to measure this for you. So this is, oh, I'm going to work in inches today. So this is 10 inches in length by about three inches in width. And then in terms of the depth, I've got about two and a half inches here. So I've got a reasonable amount of uh, wool bats. So I'm gonna take my wool and I'm gonna roll it into a bit of a, a rudimentary ball shape using my thumb to push down those corners. It doesn't have to be super tight, but relatively firm. And once I've folded it all over, I'm just gonna take my medium twisted needles in my needle felting pen. And initially, I'm just gonna tack it down so it can't unravel. And I'm just gonna use my nails here to prevent it all from unraveling and just hold everything into place. So I'm, so I'm not holding my fingers out like this because then I'm at real risk of stabbing myself. So I'm always holding it in a kind of claw-like shape, a bit like when chefs chop an onion or something like that and they hold the onion like this. So you're hitting your nails if you do stab yourself rather than hitting, hitting the skin on your fingers, which, mark my words, is very painful. I must apologise for my nails today. I painted them really quickly and then started doing things too quickly. So they're looking a bit, looking a bit rough and ropey. So uh, I do apologise. They're not really very, very neat looking, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm just going to start felting this round until we get our rough ball shape. And this can take a little while just to get everything felted down, but you just want to keep checking for any softness, any looseness. And this is why it's important to roll everything quite firmly initially, because the looser you roll it, the longer it will take you to felt everything into position. So if you fold, so if you fold everything round quite firmly in the first place, it makes life a lot easier for you when it comes to felting everything down. And as you can see here, I'm felting in a downward motion onto the mat. You can felt at an angle, but what I always say is if you do felt on an angle like this, 
don't bend your needles. So when you go in this way, you want to make sure you come out this way as well. You don't want to go in and then bend upwards or something like that because then you're going to snap your needles and you'll be very sad. I'd be very sad. So I'm just going to keep turning this. And you may find also where you've kind of rolled everything, there'll be areas that are slightly thicker than there are in other areas. So you'll kind of get these kind of lumps and things. So just take a bit of time to felt those down. And once you've got a rough circular shape, what you can do is you can just give it a roll in your hands and this helps to dissipate the wool and, and move it around the ball shape. So you've got more of an even distribution of the wool. And then I'm just gonna take my needles again. I'm just gonna felt it down again. So you wanna keep going until you've got a relatively medium firm ball. You don't want it to be really hard because we wanna still have some flexibility and bounce in it to felt it a bit more and get the shape of the face. But you want it to be relatively firm because we don't want it to be super duper soft and then everything to start kind of unraveling. And what you'll find is if you get a felt that's too soft, you'll get the wool kind of coming out as well. Um, and it just looks a bit messy. So it's good to get it relatively firm but just have a little bit of squidge there so you've got a little bit to play with when you come to shape your face and add some character to it so i'm just going to keep going i'll come back to you in a moment once i've felted this all down into place into a nice ball shape okay so i've got my rough ball shape here and as you can see it's still got a fair bit of squidge to it but what i want to do next is create a flatter side to it because once this is finished we want this to lie flush on a bag or on a jacket or something like that because it's going to be our pin badge or even if you're making it into some kind of hair bubble you still want to have a flatter side otherwise it's going to be lumpy and it's not going to sit right so what i like to do is find the side that i want to be the rounder side really push it down and then just felt it into the mat felting the sides down and really pushing this down so you're kind of forcing the back end of it to flatten out so i'm just going around the edges initially pushing it down and felting everything downwards but don't felt straight down into the middle because you'll lose your roundness you're just going around the edges at the moment I'm still using my medium needles as well, my medium twisted needles, my favourite needles to use. So I'm pushing it down but I'm felting well away from my fingers so I know I'm not going to stab myself. So it's always important if you are having your fingers outwards just make sure that the needle's nice and far away. Okay so that's looking good so what I'm going to do now is just turn it over and I'm just going to felt down the centre of the area that we want to flatten and just flatten it down a little bit more with our needles. And once you've got it looking nice and flat, just give it a press with your fingers. Concentrate more on the centre at the moment because we're going to use the edges to shape a bit more later on. So we don't want to felt too much downwards into these because we want to be able to manipulate these into a different shape but you want to just felt down the centre and just get that nice and flat so that if you add a pin on the back later, it's nice and flush. Somebody's strimming some grass outside, so I apologise for any kind of strange noises. The UFOs have not landed over my house. So I'm just going to felt down a little bit more around the sides, pushing it downwards, giving a bit more of a solid structure to the edges of our head. going to take a look at that and make sure everything's looking relatively symmetrical which it is okay so that's the first stage of our pin badge okay so the next thing we want to do now we've got that in place is add a bit more volume here where his nose and his mouth is going to be okay so I'm just going to take a bit more of my core wall so not too much just a small amount so the amount I've got here is measuring uh, four and a half inches by about an inch to an inch and a half. So all I'm going to do is fold this into a Swiss roll shape. So I'm just going to fold it over one, two, three. So it's probably about just over an inch in width and then probably a couple of inches in length. And then I'm just going to hold that down so that it's about halfway down our face. Hold it into place and just felt that into position with the medium needles again. 
Felt the edges first before you felt the center. Felting down into the mat. Keep your fingers out of the way. And then once you've got everything felted around the edges, then you can felt down the center. Okay, so you've got the first layer added. So I'm gonna add another layer now and we're gonna focus more on the central part of his face. So I'm gonna take another piece of wool, which is about four inches in length and about an inch in width. And I'm just gonna fold it over into this kind of rough triangular shape. So I'm gonna fold over the top, then I'm gonna fold over the side like this. So you've got this angle, fold it downwards, fold it against this angle here, and then fold it down like that. So you've got this rough triangular shape here. And then I'm just gonna place this in the middle of the face, just where we've added our initial first layer. And again, I'm just gonna felt down around the sides. And this is just adding some volume to where we're gonna add our nose later on. What we don't want is for everything to be completely flat because then everything looks quite linear and boring and it never really looks quite right. It's kind of very pictorial in its look and we wanna have some character. We want this sloth to look like he's peeking out from the bag. So what we're doing here is we're creating shape to the face. What we don't want is that 2D linear look because it just looks really boring and it just takes away from the professionalism of the overall sculpture. And it also just looks really lovely and engaging to look at when you've got it kind of peeking out of a little bag pocket or peeking out of the pocket of, uh, of like a school jumper or something like that. And I know my girls, absolutely love anything that looks like it could kind of come to life or it could be a bit magical they absolutely adore all that kind of stuff so I really want to get this looking as lifelike without being lifelike if you see what I mean as possible okay so that's the next stage added so I've really just felt it around the edges I haven't focused too much on the center because I want to keep that shape there and where I folded it quite tightly it's nice and tight anyway it doesn't need a huge amount of felting so the next stage is going to be to add another layer of the Shetland white over the top just to seal everything in place so I've got some more Shetland white here I don't want loads and loads. So you want enough to cover the entire head and you want it to be thick enough so that it's not opaque. So you can't see anything through the other side, but not too thick. So this is the kind of the amount you're looking for. So again, it's probably about four by three inches in its diameter. I'm just gonna fold that over my head and then I'm using my medium needles again, just to lightly felt it down over what we've already added. And again, I'm starting at the edges first and I'm kind of pulling it down. What you want to do is imagine like you're icing a cake. So you're pulling all the sides down first and getting those pulled into place. And then you can focus on the central parts. So just starting underneath. And then just felting along the front but don't felt too heavily at this stage. You wanna felt quite lightly um, because we don't lo want loads of indentations. We are gonna add additional things, but just get it lightly felted down for the time being because as we add things like the nose and the eyes, we're gonna be felting it more anyway. And then when, you've get, when you get these wispy bits, just fold them behind and felt them down into the back of the sculpture. So now you should have your layer of Shetland white felted over the top of the additional pieces we added a moment ago. So the next thing we wanna do is think about where we wanna place our nose, shape our head a bit more, and also think about where we wanna position our eyes. So I'm gonna take my fine twisted needles now, and I'm just gonna go back over everything and start shaping everything a bit more. And what I like to do with heads, especially animal heads, is to create this kind of slightly um, is to create this shape whereby the head goes in slightly at the sides and then it's flattened slightly at the top just because I think it adds a nice dimension to the head and also gives a kind of cute cute look to it so it doesn't need to be really angled because then you'll lose a lot of the height of your head but just ever so slightly just angle it inwards a little bit and then I'm just going to felt this, I'm just lifting it up to do this bit so, so I can see that the angles are even. 
I'm just going to fill up down the top as well. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just go over that nose area. So I'm going to felt a bit more around this area where we haven't added anything. And I'm also going to shape this area, pushing it inwards a bit more to create more of this snout look for our, for our sloth. So I'm just going to go around this again, just creating more of a, a three dimensional shape to our sculpture. I don't want to felt down the center of this because you're going to flatten everything okay so you want to kind of use your fingers to push this upwards and then just felt around the edge kind of securing it into position if you like and you want to be quite cautious when you add those additional layers as well you don't want anything too thick because if you have anything too thick it's going to show up when you um when you added your layer of shetland over the top you're going to have these ridges and things so the the, the goal is to get it looking as smooth as possible so everything's nicely combined together and looking lovely and cohesive. Just kind of felt down the top end as well. Because I like this nice kind of slope look that I'm going to get eventually too. Just adds a bit more character on a side profile. So no matter what angle you look at this pin badge, it's going to look uber cute. Okay. That's looking pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add a nose to our sloth and they've got these lovely, really sweet kind of brown or black noses. I'm going to go with brown today because I just think it's a more forgiving color in terms of kind of adding it onto the white in terms of kind of like any kind of additional wall that might creep onto the white. And I think you can see better with the brown, any nostrils and things like that, where I think with black, it's a bit more tricky to see any detail. So I'm gonna go with brown today. So I'm gonna go with my trusty brown merino roving because I really like using this for noses because you get a nice smooth finish once it's in place. So sloths have this kind of quite rounded looking nose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by creating almost that kind of triangular shape that I did with my mouse tutorial previously. Um, but we're going to round everything off a bit more. So it's not going to be completely round, but it's not going to be completely triangular either. I'm going to tear that extra bit off because I don't need that. Okay, and I'm just going to take my fine needles and just felt that down initially just to get it all locked into position. And then once everything's locked into position and that's not going to unravel, I'm going to start felting it. So I'm going to use my, my nail on my forefinger, my forefinger or my index finger. And I'm just going to start by pushing inwards those corners. Ensure that you keep lifting this up as you felt it. Just holding it down with my fingernail. And I'm kind of pushing the wall inwards into the center of the nose. And I'm just going to push this top part down as well. So I'm kind of going downwards. I'm going on an angle with my needles. So felting down into the mat, but also pushing the wall in as well. And just keep lifting the nose so it doesn't end up getting felted down onto your mat. You don't want it to get completely stuck because then that's a bit of a nightmare that you have to sort out. So I'm just continuing to felt it into itself. So I'm creating more volume and getting more of this rounded shape. And the fine needles are great for this because they don't leave a massive indentation. So you get a nice smooth finish to your nose and it's good for detail as well. You can kind of like push the sides in and get a nice straight finish. Whereas with the medium needles, it might be that it's a bit more rough and ready, not quite as, not quite as fine. So I'm just going to check that for sizing. And I'm going to felt it and shape it a bit more once it's in place. Okay, just felt that down a bit more. Get this a bit more rounded. That's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna felt that into position now. So again, I'm gonna start on the edge. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and central because we, what we don't want is for it to be uneven. 
and I'm just going to make sure that the position of it's about right so we don't want it to be right at the top because that would look odd unless he's obviously looking upwards but I reckon if we place it about here because what you'll find with the sloth is the mouth and the nose are very close together so I reckon if we place it about here and then we can place the mouth about here that would probably look about right so I'm just going to go around the sides first of all and again I'm still working on that roundness as well I'm just using my thumb and my finger just to hold it pinch it into place whilst I felt that down so I've still got my needles protect sorry my nails protecting my fingers and then I'm just going to go along the edge of the other side once it's locked in you can you can let go And then you can go for a few stabs down the center, but try and just stick to the sides if you can. Just a few central stabs, but nothing too major, just to lock it into position more than anything. So keep going until you've got something that looks like this. So you've got quite a rounded nose here, um, but it does kind of narrow at the top a little bit, but nothing too major. So the next thing we want to do is add some nostrils to our nose. So I'm just going to go to my single needle now, and I'm just going to create some nostril holes within the nose that we've just added. And it doesn't need to be too big, but big enough so that they can be seen. I'm just gonna start off by just putting them in roughly. And then once I'm happy with their position, I'll go in a bit heavier. So as you can see, I've started adding them there. So I'm gonna go in a bit heavier and I'll be back to you in a moment once I've felted those in. Okay, so the nostrils are in place. So what I wanna do next is add the eyes. So with sloth eyes, what you'll find is they're quite low down the face. So I'm gonna place my eyes somewhere in the area where we've added this additional, this additional bulk to our sloth face. So I think I'm gonna go about here. And they're also quite wide apart as well. So I think if I place them about here where I'm digging my fingers in, that's probably a relatively good position for our sloth eyes to go. So when you've sort of dug your fingers in, it'll leave this indentation so you can kind of see roughly where you need to put your holes. And then we're just going to create two areas, sort of eye socket areas, for our sloth eyes. And you want to make them relatively deep because you want them to be quite deeply set into our face. Again, because that just really adds character to our sloth. And then just kind of push and pull as you go. So if something looks a bit wonky, just give it a bit of a squidge and we can sort that out later on anyway. So don't be tempted to felt up too high, keep it low. And you wanna keep going until you've got a relatively deep, deep divot, deep eye socket for our eye to sit. So this is very similar to our mouse tutorial that we did before. If you want to refer to that as well, just to help you with how deep you need to go. And I'm using my medium twisted single needle here. Um, don't use a fine needle because you'll be there all day. And also I forgot to mention I used the medium needle to create the, uh, the, no the nostrils in our sloth nose as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do, and I know this might seem sound a bit counterintuitive, but I just find it works best to do it this way, is to add our colour, which is going to go downwards like the classic sloth eye does. And we're going to go completely over the eye socket that we've just felted down. Now I could have added it beforehand, but what I find helps is knowing where my eyes are going to sit, because then I know how much of that brown I then need to add to the rest of our sloth face. So I've got some pale brown Corridale here, which I think is quite a nice slothy colour. And I'm going to take some sections off. And I'm just going to hold it and it's just going to go past, it's going to go downwards. And then it's going to go past the kind of like the upper part of the eye, just prior to getting to the nose. We don't want it to go over the nose. And I'm just going to take my fine needles again. And I'm just going to lightly, very lightly, just tack it down initially into place. And it doesn't matter if it goes around the back of the head, that's fine. And then once you get to the point where the nose is, what I like to do is just fold it back over. And just 
felt that down so you get this nice round edge. So I'm going to stop there for a moment and I'm going to add the brown to the other side just to make sure it's looking the same in terms of its thickness. Doing the second side is always trickier because you have to, you have to match it. You try and get that symmetry there. So it's always good to look from a distance if you're not sure and it just really helps you to check to make sure everything's looking beautiful and symmetrical. I'm just gonna felt that down around the back as well. Again, I'm not going too heavy handed with this. I reckon that side just needs a little bit more wool just to make it the same as the other side. Very noisy strimmer. I'll go out and tell him, oi, don't you know I'm doing a lesson here? Okay, so I'm gonna leave this at the back kind of rough and ready for the moment. I'm not too worried about that. But there we go. So we've got our initial part of our sloth eye in place, this kind of the classic brown strips that they have sort of going past their eyes. So now I've got those in place and I'm happy that they're relatively symmetrical, I'm gonna felt them down properly. And I'm just gonna push this a little bit further away from the nose. And it just means I get a tighter, sort of more rounded look like you would do on a normal sloth eye. And it just kind of pushes it away from the nose a bit more as well. And you can add, you can add additional little bits of brown if you feel that it's not looking quite right. So I always say it's better to start off with less then go in with too much and then find you've got too much and it's much harder in needle felting to take it away than it is to, to add. So always go down the lines of sort of being more frugal with your wool initially than going in with too much and then you can't really go, you can't really go too far wrong. So and it just everything felt down really nicely and I love this colour as well. It gives a lovely colour to our sloth face. And I'm just going to go back in again now and I'm just going to felt back in those eye sockets that we added. And there we are, that is the first stage of your sloth head. So I will see you in the second part when we're going to be adding our eyes and our mouth and adding the rest of the colour to our sloth head to make him look super slothy. So I will see you then.